Good evening, good evening, good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Everybody's having a good night, good day. I had a great day today. It was super, super, super busy. That's for darn sure. I, uh, I had a really busy day at work. Pretty awesome. Been playing around with this new streaming software. So the views, views a little bit different. Audio is a little bit different. The setup a lot different, but uh, I'm just trying some things out, trying different ways to go live and different uh, streaming platforms. I'm really, really enjoying and digging this one. It's got a lot more control, which I don't need. That was uh, direct words from my sponsor. He said, that's the last thing you need is more control because <laughs> I definitely struggle with control. But the topic tonight, guys, um, good evening, everybody. I'm kind of looking at chat as I'm talking because it's now separate from where I'm normally used to seeing it. But uh, Joy, Patty, looks like you guys are in there. Welcome. I appreciate you guys coming in and listening. Um, Addie will be commenting as I'm chatting away, helping me out. But uh, we're going to talk about trust and why trust is so important uh in recovery and not only for yourself but in the healing process i'm gonna bring up na's reading today because that's exactly what it's about and uh share that with you guys <clears throat> january 31st trust says just for today i will have faith in someone in na or whatever 12-step program you may work just apply it uh who believes in me and wants to help me in my recovery Says learning to trust is a risky proposition. <laughs> Our past experience as using addicts has taught us that our companions could not be trusted. Most of all, we couldn't trust ourselves. How many of you guys relate to that? You know, our so-called friends when we were using, um, you know, I couldn't trust them as far as I could throw them. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, we were all, we were all addicts. We were all doing the same thing. And, uh, I don't know about you guys, but me, I was dirty and, uh, I was out for me. I wasn't out for anyone else but myself. And I did whatever I had to do. And I ran over whoever the hell I had to run over to get what I wanted. That's just how I was. That's the person I had become. Uh, at the height of my addiction. Uh, it says, now that we're in recovery, trust is essential. We need something to hang on to, something to believe in, and give us hope. Boy, do we need some hope in our recovery. For some of us, the first thing we can trust is the words of another member sharing in meetings. Man, how many times do you guys hear me talk about that? Sharing that experience, strength, and hope, and that being the most powerful tool I feel in anyone's recovery toolbox is that lived experience of another addict in recovery, another alcoholic in recovery, someone that relates to you. It's that relatable experience that is amazing. In Narcotics Anonymous, it's the beauty of the weed. That's why it's so inclusive to them. Um, the therapeutic value of one person, one addict helping another. We learn to trust our own amazing it says just for today i will decide to trust someone i will act on that trust um you know it says well i skipped over an entire line it's just because i'm getting ahead of myself with control again um it says finding someone we can trust makes it easier to ask for help how many of you guys struggled with reaching out and asking for help i know i did it took me a long time to reach out and ask for help to humble myself to, you know, practice that humility, to let my guard down, to open up, let someone over that big, huge barrier, that wall I had built for decades, um, becoming vulnerable. You know, these are all things that for me personally were really, really, really hard to do. Uh, and at times, honestly, guys, it's still kind of hard to do. Um, not nearly as hard as it was, but it's still a struggle at times. I have to work on this daily, day in and day out. That's why I say my favorite word to remain vigilant in my recovery, in our recovery. 
that as we grow to trust in their recovery, <clears throat> we learn to trust our own. Let me go back to the main screen here. You know, things that I had wrote down, you know, about this reading as I was reading it earlier, you know, trust takes time, guys. You know, we didn't become addicted one day. We didn't do the damage uh, and all the create all the chaos that we did in our active addiction in one day. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time. And the longer we're in recovery, you know, time begins to heal. Uh, people begin to heal. We begin to heal. Um, but that all happens at different rates different times, different speeds. Um, you know, I, I, I've realized that I have to give other people space um, because there's different emotions on my side of the street and on their side of the street. Um, what's really important is that I learn to clear my side of the street. You know, sometimes that's all we can do. Um, not everyone's going to be as accepting to say like an apology uh, or me asking for forgiveness for some of the chaos and wreckage that I've done in my past. Um, but I've learned that, you know, when I work the steps daily and I practice the principles daily in the 12 step program, I work, um, I use my support network, that therapeutic value and reach out and I ask for help. Um, and I'm honest about it, uh, where I'm at and what's going on. Um, basically just doing the right thing daily. Um, that action part, uh, putting in the work, um, you know, I've realized that action speaks louder than words. Ten times out of ten, you know, I'm just now starting to build trust within my family and other people um, because of some of the relationships that I've damaged over the years. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, there's a lot of gratitude uh, in having family, especially, and those loved ones start coming back around and actually reaching out and maybe asking for advice or just saying, hey, how are you doing? Um, I just recently was invited back to my own sister's house. Um, and I stole from my sister. I did her dirty. She brought me in while I was in active addiction trying to help her baby brother. You know, she was enabling, not really necessarily realizing that she was, but, you know, I did what addicts do. You know, I took full advantage of it and I was out for me and I didn't care even my own blood. I didn't give a shit who I ran over and I did her wrong. And it's taken a long time for this process to heal. Um, you know, I just try to set those clear, healthy goals, um, you know, kind of set up a plan on how I'm going to achieve them. And a lot of it is just doing the right thing and just being honest. Um, you know, rebuilding that trust is a long, long journey. Um, I know it has been for me and it is for many other people. Um, I know I, it's a slow journey and I just have to take it and trust the process and not become overwhelmed with it and, and be okay um, with the ones that aren't so as accepting as others may be. Um, you know, what's really important, I think the most important part of it is to build the trust within yourself. You know, we have to work on ourselves before we can work on trying to heal other relationships and things like that. Um, you know, friends, family, loved ones, we all know that takes time. Um, it's going to take a lot of time. Um, but I know, you know, building that trust within myself, you know, I struggle with the self-esteem issues. I struggled with having a purpose. You know, I was hopeless. I didn't want to be here anymore. Um, motivation, um, isolation, um, feeling less than, inadequate. Um, you know, building that trust within myself and that self-confidence. Um, it's not easy, um, but it, it has gotten a lot easier over time. Um, so I know for me personally, building that trust within myself first, it's really, really important. It really is. And, you know, I'm a work in progress. I'm not perfect. And I make mistakes. When I make those mistakes, I share honestly about it. And I just try to be a better person at the end of the day and the next day and so on and so forth. You know, I do that daily inventory and see what I could possibly do to, do, you know, to be better the next day if I make a mistake. I'm going to jump over here into the chat and 
try to read what everybody's saying here real quick. Um, <clears throat> Julie said she's grateful for my church family was checked on today to see if I needed groceries. I actually made it to the store today and I'm grateful they are looking out. Amen. Amazing, man. It's those little blessings of recovery that are freaking awesome. Um, you know, to have, that's part of your support network and that's your support network looking out for you. Um, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, Patty said, I went to a different meeting and didn't feel safe to share there. Boy, I've been there. I have totally been there. It's important that we try different meetings and challenge ourselves. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. That's why you haven't personally seen me uh, in the meetings that you typically see me in because I've changed it up myself. Um, I've taken that suggestion, um, not only by you right now, but by others, including my sponsor. Um, it's a good thing to, to change it up from time to time and get that different perspective, that different experience, strength, and hope from other people. Um, it's not that it's a bad thing to be in the same meeting all the time. Um, but I don't know, for me personally, it just gets stagnant. It really, really, really does. Uh, let's see. Joy, working on sharing my testimony. Stay tuned. I am definitely down to hear that. If you put something together, you know, you need to send it my direction because I will definitely post it up on the page. Um, I'm I'm very, very interested in hearing that. I love hearing that experience, strength, and hope. If any of you guys out there tonight listening have a testimony you want to share, you want to post it on the Facebook page, please do. I am all for it. I absolutely love seeing that kind of stuff. So we said progress, not perfection. We didn't become addicted in one day, so easy does it. I could go on and on and on. It takes time. Not a, There's many things other than just trust that take time to heal. Um, trust just happens to be the topic, but, uh, got someone here, Kansas speaking the truth. Well, I appreciate Lacey. I appreciate you being in here and tuning in. It's nice to see new people tuning in. Uh, I'm new to this. I love sharing my experience, strength, and hope. I try to go live as much as possible here lately. It's been every night. Um, I'm a peer recovery specialist, peer recovery supporter in Ohio. It keeps me really busy. Um, but I absolutely love it. You know, almost a year and a half ago, guys, I was hopeless and homeless and, you know, I was lost. I was completely lost and I could go on and on and on about gratitude and what recovery has done for me personally in my life, but it's not about me. Uh, it's about sharing the message and hopefully somebody out here tonight hears something, uh, that may change your life and may save a life. That's what it's all about to me, guys. I appreciate y'all tuning in tonight. I am going to get off of here. I haven't really, I've been snacking tonight. I missed my lunch because I was busy at work helping someone. And when I came home, we, we have this new wonderful invention. that's not really a new wonderful invention called a deep fryer that has become Addie, my girlfriend's newfound love in life. And it's been mine for a long time because I'm, the fat kid and I love fried food. So I, uh, I had some fried, deep fried. What we eat? It was, uh, fried wontons and spring rolls. And I'm not for sure what we're going to make now, but I'm still flipping hungry. And it's nine o'clock at night in Ohio. Go Bengals, go Bengals, go Bengals. I'm in Dayton, but I'm from the Cincinnati area. Um, so I got to give them a shout out, even though for the last, 20, 30 plus years, they've sucked really bad, but this year they're kicking ass and say a prayer for my bungles that, uh, they're super bowl bound. It's amazing. I love you guys. Yeah. I see the yums in there. Did you take, what'd you say? Did you take the poison apple yesterday? What was the poison apple yesterday? I'm completely lost. Probably something smart. I like. Um, that I was doing or saying, I would almost bet 10 times out of 10 it's something in relation to something that I did or said, because it usually is. I was probably teasing Addie about something or being a smart ass like I typically am. I love each and every one of you guys. Remember, please stay positive. Have that attitude of gratitude daily. You know, it's a choice. 
whether we sit in our shit or not, or we hit that reset button when we're having a bad day, reach out and share if you're having a bad day. Reach out and share if you're having a great day. Apple fritter. You know what? I did not eat that apple fritter. Addie ate it. I have it. Yeah, she brought it. She brought the rest of it home for me, right? And what happens? I go to work and she eats the rest of it, but I did tell her she could have it. I'm not a big sweet. Yeah, I am a big sweet eater. I just, for some reason, an apple fritter just wasn't doing it. I didn't eat most of my dinner. Well, I ate most of my dinner. You ate my, uh, what else did you eat of mine? Um, Why are we on? I don't know. See, squirrel. You guys ever had them squirrel moments? I'm an addict. My brain's all over the place. It happens. This is real life. Raw, uncut, and unedited. That's why I love it so much. Because I don't take the time to go back and edit all the bloopers out because I don't care. I really don't. I love you guys. Yeah. I'm trying to focus. I'm trying. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everyone, for coming in. Um, for those that this is your first time, it's not usually this crazy. Yes, it is. I'm lying. It is. It's actually pretty fun. <laughs> you guys have a good night. Have a blessed night. We will talk to you guys tomorrow night. I love you guys. We'll talk to you later.